Hey there everyone, this is Zane Destiny, welcoming you back to another Gundam Breaker 3 video. Uh, this is going to be slightly different, we're going to finish off this next mission in the story. Uh, it's regarding Core Assault. Uh, from what I can understand from the description, you have to defend the core and defeat the opposing players. Um, this is going to be a bit of a two part video, we're going to complete this mission and afterwards I'm going to do a bit of explanation regarding uh, parts merge and assembly. Uh, thanks to a user named Gar145, I hope I haven't butchered your name too much. He's basically asked, um, uh, da, da, da. I need a final question. Uh, did you know where I can find info about different merge type of crafting? Uh, basically what he's asking is uh, how the hell does a crafting system work in this one? I will admit I found it very tedious and difficult to get used to in this game and I don't know it all unfortunately. Um, so I'm just going to blitz through this mission as fast as I can and um, this is kind of cool, like a Gelgu Tri-Stars. And I'm still overpowered, well hey. I can't imagine they take long, so at the moment it looks like yeah, I'm defending my core. I don't know how long this part will last. Okay, I'm guessing that's like a first wave sort of thing. Oh, well, um, have we done that then? Oh, okay, now I'm destroying their core, fair enough. All oh, right, so you take it in turns. Oh, how many? I wonder how many times this goes back and forward. So I'm guessing we kill them first. It kind of like the monoloths. We destroy the opposing players, and then the monolith opens up. Boo, 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 boo. I got it away with my beam. Okay. Oh wow, <laughs> the thing does not have a lot of health. Oh, the shield's back up. Oh, okay, yeah, they come back again. So I'm guessing the rounds work that you keep going until a team dies and then you switch over until a team destroys a core fully. But I think... Did that become four players just now? I could have swore there's like an extra person there. But yeah, I think what it didn't count on was um, an overpowered Gatling gun. Or a shield, even. That can't be it, can it? Yeah, okay, that's it. That was the, uh, how long did that last? Like three minutes, if that? Wow, okay, that's fair. Well, that kind of a good reason why I'm kind of making this into a two-parter episode. Well, not a two-part, but you know what I mean. Um, let's blitz. Actually, this would be helpful because I would need some parts that are green, actually. They've got a green part there. Yeah, I think some of those... Right, so the main thing you want to look for is all the coloured parts, all the white parts mean nothing now. Um, the green, green, blue, purple and yellow parts have these abilities. So on this one it's got plus 39% uh, in, to induce stagger into our opponent. Now as far as I'm considered, or as far as I'm aware, um, say like that induced stagger is on the beam saber. It doesn't necessarily mean that when you use that heat saber that's the thing that will induce a stagger from what i can tell or how i'm interpreting it even if you shoot them with the this machine gun for example and you had this induced stagger equipped onto your mobile suit it will apply it to the machine gun as well because when it when you go into your specification it doesn't list what each part does it just lists the percentages as a total so you could have a weapon that has stagger, a rifle that has stagger, a head that has stagger, so on and so forth, and it will just add it as one percentage. It doesn't say heat saber will do 10% stagger, the head parts, like, you know, it doesn't do anything like that. So if you're going for a specific bit build, like, well, there we go, Gatling gun, Gatling DPS. My uh, suit uses a Gatling gun DPS. If I equip this head now, it will increase my DPS factor, but I don't want to use a Goku head. I'm not some sort of Xeon scum. So a good thing to do would be to merge the parts with my current head, and that will add the total, what well, a majority of percentage of the total, onto my current head that I want to use. So ultimately, there's no best parts in this game. As with Gunder Breaker 2, there wasn't exactly like a best parts. But in this one, you kind of pick your best loadout, your favourite suit or your favourite customization, 
and you improve on that one thing which I think is very nice because it makes you, you got your own suit you got your own choices of what you want to do so that's brilliant so we're just going to take all this and now what I'll do next oh sorry I wasn't expecting this I probably should have actually I don't like how does she know she got a heart shaped water in her face Oh, by the way, yeah, um, Gar145, yeah, I'm more than happy to add you on uh, PS4. I'll do that as soon as I can. Um, I will be working quite long shifts the next few days, so please understand that I might not be online as much as I like to. But, well, unfortunately, um, the industry I work in, the Euro 2016 football's coming up, so I'm going to be expected to do quite a lot of hours, unfortunately. So, yeah, please bear with me. Uh, anyone else that's willing to or would like to add me on, feel free to. I'm more than happy to. Um, I haven't done a live stream before. Unfortunately, I was attempting to live stream this on my PS4 now on YouTube, but um, the application blocks YouTube live streaming. And for some reason, my PS4 is having issues. I just noticed Mr. Gumpler. Yeah. Well, you can tell he was um, part of the series since 1979. Um, that was a lame joke. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, yeah, um, my PS4 just has issues connecting to Twitch. It comes out of this WC error code, whatever. So I've never actually been able to stream to Twitch, unfortunately. And there she goes with a creepy back stare again. Actually, they're both staring at me weird. I mean, Night Gundam just stares at me blankly, like awaiting answers on his existence. You know, why is he here? And she just looks at me creepily, like, you know, I'm creeping up behind her. Alright, we're not going to give it a best shot yet, I'm going to have to try and demonstrate these parts. Well, demonstrate and explain as best I can. Okay, so... Uh, let's try it on the... Yeah, we'll do it on a dash impulse. So I've got a few uh, green parts in that mission, as you saw. So we'll go to setup, and there used to be an extra category here. Be like, Well, there used to be two categories. Build weapon, where you build like the weapons, shields, and melee weapons. And there used to be scratch. And what scratch used to do, you used to be able to develop parts, either level up the parts to higher levels or um, develop them into another thing. So say like the uh, GN Sword 2 could become the GN Sword 3 and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, as an example. But everything to do with merging and upgrading is all under assemble now. And it's not obvious at first, but if you look at the bottom of the screen, it's got the d-pad circle x and then square for merge now that's the thing that's going to help us level up our parts and it's the most important thing and probably the most tedious thing it's not the most exciting way to develop stuff so you press square you get these four options there's a lot of text behind them and i'm really glad that i got this in english now because i would never have stood a chance so pair merge um it will select so the current item that you selected that you highlighted and press square over, it will have that part in one side and then you select another part to merge with it. So if I did that now, press circle on that. So on the right hand side, on the far right, um, that is the stats of my um, the GNX beam table, the orange beam table I got. If I can, oh wait, no, I don't want to sell anything. And my battery's getting low. Quickly put, plug that in. Where's my phone charger? There we go, that'll do. Right, okay, so on, at the abilities base on the far right hand side, my GNX Sabre, it has all those current abilities. So it has a juice stagger plus 50%, induced not bad plus 53. I got all those percentages by merging these green parts. And say, for example, 
Okay, so if I select a white part, for example, it's got in the middle column, that's the current, what the stats of the white part will do. And it will add no abilities, but it will increase my basic DPS and total DPS by a good amount, because um, the beam saber is like as low, well, it will level up. I don't really use a beam saber, I don't see the point in it. But um, if I selected, okay, so remember that heat saber that induced stagger? This is where things become a bit tricky because even though that beam saber has induced stagger plus 39%, it does not exactly add 39% to the induced stagger I already have. The induced stagger I have at the moment is 50.14%. If I added that induced stagger onto mine, it would only increase it by like 2%. Well, not even 2% really. A little bit under 2%, but even so. So even though you get like a high percentage like green part that you can add on top of your new, your current equipment, it won't increase it by that dead set amount. And unfortunately, I don't know the mass behind it on how much percentage you'll add. Is there anything else that I... Okay, yeah. So uh, if I highlight that white part again, on my current equipment, a GNX sword, bottom, right at the bottom of the abilities list as parts break repair plus 4,700. So every time I break apart, my suit gets repair. That beam saber, the victory beam saber, also has that ability plus 4,700. And shoot, what was I? 4,700. So if I added uh, onto my current equipment, it would only increase it by 300 more points. So it's not going to add another 4,000 onto that current 4,000 to make like 9,400 or anything like that. Did I maths right? Did I maths? Yeah, I can maths. Yay. Uh, roughly. So if you want to sort of like get the absolute maximum, which I don't know if there is a maximum because I have seen players online with like 149% on certain equipment. So... Yeah, if you want the absolute maximum, you're going to need a whole lot of parts. And I'm guessing, like, the higher percentage you already have, the longer it's going to, um, you know, get go up by 1%. Um, oh, bear in mind, there is a limit to how many of these abilities you can have on one set of equipment. So, if I were to go back again. Right. Uh, if I press L2, it will bring up the... You can sort of, like, compare... Um, you can compare parts. For some reason I find it strange but the current equipment part always appears on the right hand side. I'm not used to that, I'm used to it being on the left but hey ho. So if I compare my purple rarity part to say like a white for example, and the abilities of the white spot only has four spaces whereas my one has one, two, four, six, eight, eight slots. I think gold gives you 10 slots. So if you want different abilities on your weapons, you can only have up to four on that white spot. Whereas on my purple, I can have up to eight. And it steady increases depending on rarity. So five for green, I think that's about eight, six, six for, six for blue. And um, I think pretty sure yellow is 10. But yeah, so that's the main important um, if you want to get the most out of your abilities and your equipment, you'll want to quickly level them up to in rarity. And it doesn't matter what sort of part it is, if it will raise your rarity, do it anyway. Even if specifically the abilities that it has isn't something that you really want. Like, a, for example, uh, these are pretty good. Like, I don't understand this one. Damage done when near death plus 30. Oh wait, I'm guessing if I'm redlining, if my head health is at a red line, I'll do more damage. But even then, I don't really want to be at low health. Uh, let's look for a stupid ability. Okay, remember in one of my other videos where I said about this ability where resistances increase without parts? That's a stupid ability. I do not want that on my, any of my parts. I don't even know what it does. I don't even understand it. I could always remove that and not have it allocated to the parts I want. It's a little bit convoluted when you actually do it, but it will still work. So if say for right, so if I go back to that GNX sword again and press square, you got here packet merge. Now packet merge is like 
Right, okay. Let's um I'll go back to pair merge and I'll show you what I mean. So I'll do pair merge. I want that induced dagger. Right, I'll do that. Press circle. Press circle again. Okay, it's done that. And I've got to press circle again and go back into that menu. And then I want to parts break repair. I want to add that. Press circle. Press circle again. And then press circle. And it brings me back to that. Pair merge does things one at a time. Packet merge does things a bunch of times. So but basically it's a package. So you just select all the parts that you want. Select everything you want. I'm not going to actually merge these because I probably want to keep some of these. Um, and then you press square. Do I dare press square? Oh, I don't want to press square yet. Yeah. Um, it gives you a warning. If a part you selected is part of another mobile suit that you got saved, it will give you a warning. Please pay attention to this because I've mistook it willy-nilly enough times and lost pretty good parts. So please don't do what I did. Uh, and then you press circle and then the merge it. Well, now I'm going to cancel all this because I don't really want to do that. And then I'm going to, if you hold circle, uh, on, I'll try that again. So everything's deselected again. Now, if I had nothing deselected and I held circle, it will select all the parts that are not currently part of a mobile suit. So this large heat hawk is part of one of my other mobile suits that I created and saved. It won't select that. It will leave that alone. I should probably merge these G hammers, shouldn't I? But anyways, um, so that's kind of what package merge is helpful for. It's helpful for merging whites, and I only suggest only merging whites with package merge, because pair merge. My oh, screen's flickering a lot there. Pair merge, as you can see in like the blue text, it will add on rarity level. Um, abilities and ability inherent inheritance and things like that package merge won't do any of that all package merge will do will just add to the level of the item and what I mean by level is can you see where it's level 18 it's got that little bar above it package merge will only add experience to that bar it won't carry over the rarity the abilities or anything like that so what I tend to do, I tend to pair merge everything first, check which abilities that I kind of want to add to my equipment, do all that, and then to get rid of all the useless whites, then I do pair merge, uh, package merge, and merge all the useless whites that I don't want. So that's the main important thing between those two. And that is the only way, well, the only real way to uh, increase rarity in parts and stuff like that. Um, the other thing is plastic merge. So you know in levels I've been collecting like uh, low quality plastic, plastic and those yellow, um, those yellow orb things that in, oh, inheriting item cubes. That's what it says, yeah. Um, think of that as not using actual parts. So whereas pair merge is using like the actual weapons that you pick up, plastic merge uses the plastic you pick up so you can level up so we'll go for low quality plastic this is like the well the crappiest plastic you can get and you can set a number depending how much you have and um <laughs> wow okay so on the top right it's got level 18 my jx sword if i use all 761 of my low quality plastic <laughs> yeah that's how much it only goes up by and it does quite cost quite a bit of um money as well Whereas I use my high quality hard plastic, 96, it will level up by 10 levels, that's pretty good. But getting high quality hard plastic, as you can tell, is quite difficult to get. I think um, that was quite a lot of arena matches to get that. Difficult ones as well. Um, so yeah, that's if you just want to level up your parts without um, using them other parts. You also got these cubes and... They only can be used on certain types of equipment. So what's this one? This is enemy kill, awakening charge. So every time I kill an enemy, my awakening gets a charge. Now, I don't have that. If it was... um, oh, I haven't got an example here. Yeah. Well, if it was a piece of equipment that I already had on this GNX Saber in the middle table, the text would be in blue. 
So what that means is it will just add on to the percentage I already have. But unfortunately, if I try and merge this now, it will ask me to take off one of the abilities I already have present, which I don't really want to do. Yeah, yeah, I don't really want to do any of that. Um, what if I can get another example? Um, oh wait, there was that head part that gave um, uh, thingy damage, wasn't there? Right, Impulse Gundam. Pretty sure it was like a Gelgu that did. Yeah, Gatling DPS. So if I select a white at the moment, my Impulse head on the far right, Gatling DPS is 2410. If I add that Gelgu onto it, see the text, is, the number is in blue now, it will be 2400. So I'll be gaining an additional 35, <laughs> 25 even. So yeah, as you can see, I won't get the full whack of the number. What if I tried something different? Yeah, I'll give you another example. Right, this. Yeah, the only thing. I don't know what the. Most of this orange text on abilities, I don't even know what half of them do. Some of them do obvious things like the increased th thruster capacity and things like that, but e carbine, e carbon, GM particle creating, don't know what the hell that does. But let's just say, for example, this has no abilities. If I merge that with the Gelgoog head. Do I really want to do that though? Yeah, go for it. It's not going to add much to my impulse head anyway. So, what am I merging it with? I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to merge that. Now, on this screen, I can choose what to keep and what not to keep. Now, at the moment, Gatling DPS, which is what's going to be added onto the left hand side, that will be added automatically. That's already highlighted. If I click it off, it'll take it off again. Now, E Carbine, I don't even know what it does. What I tend to do, if I'm not too sure what it does or anything, on the right hand side, if I keep clicking something, and if a number changes, and it's a number that I don't particularly want to go down, I sort of like keep it or get rid of it. If I see it doesn't do anything, I just get rid of it. So if I select that, um, can you see at the bottom where it's got base ability 0 out of 5? So that means at the moment I've got nothing selected on this part. So when I merge it, the part will have nothing. Whereas if I selected E Carbine, it will say 1 out of 5. And I don't see E Carbine. Why do I say E Carbine all the time for? Yeah, I can't see E Carbine doing anything. So I'm going to get rid of that. But I am going to merge over Gatling DPS. And, uh. Okay, that's going to add 1551. So that's another factor. Something's happening there. Because, um. I would have thought it only would have added 486. What am I merging it with? Double O Gundam. Well, I kind of would have understood, given a high percentage of, say, like something like the Goof Custom, which uses a machine gun, or the Heavy Arms, which uses a Gatling gun, sorry. But I don't understand why the Double O Gundam's adding such a. Or it might be still. Oh, yeah, sorry. Nah, sorry, ignore that number. I've got other parts that have Gatling DPS, and that's what's adding on top. So, yeah, that's probably why it's come up with such a high number, because of my other parts. So, yeah, let's go ahead and merge this now. So, I've selected the parts, the abilities that I wanted. If I press square, you sure want to proceed? Yes, go for it. Bing. Right, so this double O Gundam head has now gone up in rarity. It's gone to green, and it now has four, plus 486 Gatling DPS. Alright, I can either press circle to carry on merging other parts, or I can press square, um, X even, to go back to my full list. So now you can see, if I up, yeah, see, you can see that it's got the Gatling DPS. But, um, I'm not really going to switch heads to tell the truth. <laughs> okay. Um, that is probably the best way I can explain it. It's... I mean, uh, I do have a few yellow parts that you can... Oh, no, 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 don't. Wrong buttons. So, yeah, yeah, I think... Yeah, it looks like 10. Yeah, it's 10 slots. So, yeah, the higher rarity, the more slots you have to add on abilities. Now, there's only certain abilities that I find usable. Durability, definitely. Response speed, I believe that's your mobile suit's ability to switch from shooting to melee. 
And since I'm not meleeing that much, I might get rid of that at some point and then replace it as something else. I'm not sure what yet because I don't know the full list of abilities. Uh, invisible titanium, the orange text that added, um, uh, what's it called? Dur some durability and VPS special frame. I think that was thruster capacity. I'm not sure, but there's some. But eventually, if I found something that was better than those orange abilities. I'll replace them because the orange abilities don't stack whereas the abilities that have like a percentage will stack albeit it'll take longer to stack but eventually they'll outperform those orange abilities eventually or well just add on to the total you already have um, so yeah that's pair merge so pair merge use that first do it things one at a time you know look at the abilities that you want yourself what sort of suit have you got have you got a melee suit where you're going to want something that's got higher response speed and something that's got saber damage or if you're a range shooter there is a ability where if you switch to shooting mode which i don't use um it will increase the damage by like 60 odd percent and that's a massive increase on top of already the like dps damage or the percentage damage that you'll be already doing so once you've got the combination or the type of suit that you want, you can find abilities that will cater to your design and will increase even more. And do you remember when I said uh, earlier on that um, a part with a specific ability doesn't matter because it totals the percentage as a whole? That induced stagger on, on the middle column where it's got abilities. I'll, I'll move it so you can see it. So, Wow, I've got a lot of abilities on this suit. Wow. Anyways, that induced stagger, that is on my beam saber, uh, my gatling gun, uh, that could be it, I'm not sure. I guess it is just on those two, I'm not sure. 52%. 89% and what was the total? Yeah, yeah, that's about right. Yeah, so it doesn't matter which part has what because it will just accumulate it together into one category. So even if my Gatling gun didn't have induced stagger, but my sword did, my Gatling gun would still induce stagger. That's what I can understand how this works. If it doesn't, then this whole menu system is stupid then. Because it should list individual parts of what they do. Because, you know, if I want to induce stagger with my Gatling gun, but it hasn't got that ability, then what's the point do using it, you know? But, um, f yeah, from what I can understand, no matter what part it is, it will add everything together. Oh, and this is the section where you can add your builder's parts. Um, I'll just give you a quick preview of that. I then buy these. These were came as soon as I unlocked the builder's parts. But it's a... Uh, He's all right, not too bad. I won't probably won't use them. I won't even need to use them as long as the shield's overpowered. But from what I can tell, you can adjust the angle of them, adjust the placement slightly. Um, I might make a Gundam where it's got a pair of boobs. Who knows? And of course, here's the EX actions. Oh, the EX actions. I don't know if this was the same in Gundam Breaker One or I know Gundam Breaker Two. There was like a level one, level two equivalent. But um, if you can try and star out the abilities, can you? So in the middle column where it's got specification, skill proficiency, it's got a star. So what this means, if I could find an example, right? Can you see these yellow EX actions? Oh, never noticed this one before. Knight Gundam Comet Sword. Oh, I might have to try that. But yeah, these yellow ones. Can you see that's a bazooka EX action? I don't currently have a bazooka equipped but I can use it. What starring out EX actions means is that suits, um, other suits that even though they don't currently have that specific weapon equipped they can use those gold actions. So that's quite mad to tell the truth. I mean you could, I mean I've got a Gatling gun and I can equip like a bazooka EX action or even an axe me EX action. So it's very worth trying different play styles different weapons and maximum to however far you can get them because yeah that, it's just super useful i work and imagine it being super useful 
And um, actually, what, what, should I, what is the DPS thing? Oh yeah, plus 18,000 shield damage to my shield DPS. That's why my shield's so overpowered. <laughs> what's my, what's my total weapon one? Gatling. Uh, where's Gatling DPS? 3,000. Yeah. <laughs> insane numbers, insane. And then Eagles, of course, have got like other things like option equipment capacity. Yeah, so it, it is a little convoluted, I must admit. It's taken me, well, I'm still not used to it now. I mean, I still make mistakes about merging and stuff. But just remember, pair merge, find the abilities you want, merge them. Package merge, if you just want to level up your part and want to get rid of useless whites, do that. Placid merge, if you want to add extra abilities without sacrificing parts or leveling up without sacrificing parts, placid merge, that's your game. This, I don't know. Derive merge. So what it says, the selected Gumpla base part that you selected can be merged with other parts and materials to create a new Gumpla of a different base. And it's got like a little example. It looks like it's got a, um, it's like a normal RX-7-8 and God knows what Gundam that is. I want to say something like a Victory Gundam or something. But it looks like those two merge into the Terran A Gundam, which I kind of thinks pointless because you get that part anyway. But uh, leveling up, strength and abilities, and inheritance uh, and rarity will still merge, but the two base parts that you use will be lost. I've not been able to use it because, if say for example, I use this, set parts cannot undergo merge. I don't know how to use it. Really, do not know. But then I'm thinking, would well, I need to use it? Because in all fairness, all the parts that I can get can be get through missions or even through a bounty under mode. So I'd say this is probably a useless, a, a useless function. I don't see the purpose of it. Um, they probably try to make something similar, like you had to collect the CAD materials and Gun and Breaker 2 to make certain weapons. They probably tried doing something like that. And I don't see the point of it. Unless I come to a point where I find out, oh wait, no, I do need to do that, you know. And uh, actually, these pictures actually help, you know, part for a part merge, one head using loads of heads to level up, and a head using plastic, yeah. So the images kind of explain it a little too. And I hope I did what I could to explain how to do things as well. It's not it is not the easiest leveling up system ever. Gun and Breaker 1 relied on RNG Jesus. God, I haven't said that since Destiny. And um Gun and Breaker 2, I still feel was a superior leveling up um method because you collected plastic, you collected um certain pieces to make new equipment and you actually saw your results. Whereas this one I mean, you saw what happened if I tried adding all those plastic onto one piece, only raise it by a few levels. Whereas Gun and Breaker 2, you actually saw the results and felt the results even. Um, also, each part, in a sense, in Gun and Breaker 2 had a purpose. Like the GM Bazooka is great at knocking away parts, knocking parts off of enemies. But then again, you could still get that in this sort of game. But you can do it with any weapon and any gun or any part. So you truly can make your suit yours so to speak um, I'm not sure what else I can discuss to tell the truth regarding that but, um, I mean I could probably show a few more examples or go past these I don't want to show these off yet I'm um, just doing a little silly project on the side I got the palace of theme chess piece and I thought oh that looks kind of cool just mainly being like the neck area that I thought was cool so at the moment, I don't think this has any... Oh, except for the arms. I've got, I gave it the gesture of cannon arms and it's got these set abilities. But if I... Let's try and add... So this heat saver's got nothing at all. So let's see what happens. It will do plus 144 attack. So every time I hit something, I'll repair 144. Do I have another one of these? I don't really want to merge it and lose it because I want to keep this like thing empty as possible. 
Ah ouais, t'es... t'es... Gelgoog. Ok, ok, ok. Alright. So, at the moment... I know I showed this before, but I'll just show it again. So, at the moment... This heat saber is a white. So, I'm gonna pair merge it. Alright, and it, sh- it will increase in basic DPS and total. So total DPS is a total suit. And it will also gain the ability of every time you attack it, it will get repair. So I'll do that now. I select which parts I want, but it's already selected, so I don't need to do that. And merge. It's gone up to a green level. And um, again, I'll show you... Um, what will happen? Right, so we're going to select. I don't want to select two good parts. Right, I'm never going to use these. Uh, what's this one got? See, when you go to packet merge, you cannot see the abilities that a set of equipment has. So that's a little unfortunate. That was something that they kind of could have improved on because usually L2 brings up the um, stats of the equipment. So I'm going to have to go back to pair merge. Find that bit of equipment again and see what it does. So parts break, repair, or attack hit repair. Oh, I don't really want to get rid of those because that would be good to combine with something else. Uh, right, this one. This green gun and hammer. Damage done when near death. Okay. So go back to package merge so I can show that example again. Find that darn beam saber. Oh wait, no, I've already got the. Right, it's not from the beginning. Packet merge. Right, find the Gunham Hammer. So that was the same one that had that ability when near death. I'm going to merge all these. Will you want to merge? Yeah, go for it. And as you can see, it did not inherit the skill. So that's that's why I suggest doing pair merge first, finding the skills you want, and then doing package merge afterwards. Package merge is if you just want to clean your slate because... Once you get enough parts, all this does look get very messy. And um, the way, um, that's why they got the filter option. So if you press triangle, it asks you to filter certain things. So you can either just show beam sabers by de highlighting the rest of the things. It's even got like which series do you want them from. That's pretty ideal. Label. You can, I'll, I'll show, actually, I'll show labeling now. If you press options on a part, it will label it in different colors. Not really made the full use of that yet, but maybe one day, who knows. Um, you can also decide whether you want to show HGE. But what I tend to use, I press R1 now, it will go to the sort category. Now, to make um, sifting through pair merge easier, I do rarity first, then by name, then by ID. I don't think these two matter too much, but I always do rarity thir- first. So all my green parts that I don't really want to merge in package merge goes at the top. But um, do not in this screen doesn't affect the merge screen. So unfortunately, what you're going to have to do um, to make full proper use of this, go into the pair merge screen, press triangle in this screen, and do exactly the same. So rarity, name, then ID. And it will rearrange these. Unfortunately, in the weapons category, it does in a different category, which is kind of useful, I guess. But it will always display the higher rarity items at the top. It just makes things a whole lot more easier, rather than just sifting through a massive list. Actually, I can give you an example now, really. So if I reset to the way it was before, default, default, Okay, can you see like the green parts in the middle of the list? Now it's not so bad in the weapons categories because they separated by um, melee, whip, axe and all that. But the general parts like the heads and all that, it'll be mixed all over the buggery. So hence why I always do rarity first and uh, what was option two, the triangle, name and yeah, kind of like that. And now I'll always put the rarity parts at the top. That's my preference. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Maybe you enjoy sifting through hordes of categories of coloured variants of rarities and whatever. But um, that's not something I want. Ah, oh, here we go. It is a good example. Right, so at the moment it's got GM beam pistols. But yet the EX action that I can equip on it is the multi-blast. I can do that because I started it on one of my other builds. 
so that's that's why it's really good to star out your builds it can be tedious especially with like these um uh i guess you can call them like blue tier ex actions because they take ages to level up uh same thing like this uh d drag oh yeah that's like the transam mode for the um astro red frame not, not the red frame but you know the, the dragon frame whatever it's called um yeah um these these ones will take forever to level up unfortunately but hey oh nothing wrong with that oh here we go i'll knock this one sweet um i'm not sure what else i can say really that's um that's as most i learned from like the leveling up system in this it's not the best system but then again it could be worse it could be rng jesus and that's something you really don't want um but yeah um i hope i hope um gar 145 shoot is that your name quickly checking my phone just to make sure i didn't mess up this poor guy's username yeah, Gar 145, yes. Um, I will add you on PS4 as soon as possible, as I said. Anyone else wants to, feel free to. And once again, Gar 145, I hope this answers your questions as best as possible. Um, it's not the most easiest thing to understand. I totally, I totally get that. Um, it took me almost forever to get it this far. Um, I still, as I said, I couldn't answer everything. But I hope this helped you out and it looks like from what i remember from that cinematic we should have a a new mission to play so well i'll see you guys next time and i think this will be the finals finals of the regional cup is it that'll be something to look forward to i'm not using this piece of crap well mind you he does look cool but he's just uh he's just a bit of fun on the side the dash impulse is my one and only after all. Okay, well, thanks guys. I'll hopefully see you again next time. Bye bye.